I've uh, been doing research um, with Dr. Servant for a few years, since my sophomore year, um, and I've been doing a lot of data crunching um, with height and length data collected um, for the children in the milk and medicine program at, during each distribution. Um, I've had the opportunity to work through a few summers and um, also through the academic years. and. Um, yeah, I, it's been a few years since I started and it's just been really cool to see how the project has grown since then. So I got involved with the Milk and Medicine Research Project um, because I was in an intro to social work class with Deb Sturdivant. During class she ended up presenting her prior research there and I ended up raising my hand in the middle of class because my niece is Zambian and she's adopted out of that organization and it was just a crazy small world. So um, we ended up meeting after class and then kept meeting, just explaining my heart for Zambia and my passion for vulnerable children. And she ended up asking me to join her research team. So the possibility of actually going to Zambia was something that was kind of always on the horizon, um, even when I first started the project. As things kind of started getting pieced together, um, it just got closer and closer. I tried to hold back my excitement as much as I could um, just because I knew that so many things had to come together for it to work out, um, funding, paperwork, all of that good stuff. Um, so when it finally all came together and we knew that we were going, it was just really exciting to know that we were actually going to be able to go and to see the program and to meet the kids and the families in the program. So. to Lusaka and we went right to the House of Moses which is where um, they had a sting and the House of Moses is the center or the the main site for the medical medicine program um, and where some of the social workers are and that is also the orphan transit home or the orphan crisis center. On one hand these are my niece's friends um, who even some of them I've met last summer and so Seeing them and just seeing them purely as my niece's friends um, is a beautiful thing and of course I want to interact with them and play with them. Um, on the other hand, I can't ever forget that they're orphans and so they come with a lot of trauma, um, a lot of attachment issues many times and so it's very, very important to be aware of how um, we were interacting with them and yeah, it's, it's unlike anything, any other experience. Um, I think when you look into an orphan's eyes, um, your life is radically different from that point on. It doesn't get easier, um, and I don't want it to get easier because I don't want to become desensitized um, because it is um, <laughs> obviously a tragedy. It was challenging, but... Um, that's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about the research that we were doing. So there were a lot of images that kind of stuck with me from our trip to Zambia, but I think in particular there was one that has just kind of been in my mind ever since. Um, one of the first distribution days that we went to, there was a woman who came in carrying, um, well actually it was her daughter. At first I thought it was her granddaughter just because the caretaker looked so old and just so weathered, but um, it was her daughter that she was bringing in. Um, and she had to carry her in because she was so thin, her arms and her legs were just sticks, like, unlike anything I've ever seen before. Um, and the, the girl was probably about eight or nine years old, but just totally incapable of bringing herself in. So it was just really awful to see that and to really experience that level of malnourishment. It's just not something that I personally had ever experienced before, and it was again, just something that you really can't understand without actually seeing it. So uh, first we observed the whole distribution process where the Christian Alliance brings all the supplies, um, the milk, the food, the supplements for the families. All the children and families are called up one by one um, to be measured for their height and their weight. All the families are called one by one to receive their supplements. And it was a very long process. It was probably two or three hours just of that. Um, we just got to observe, and um, it was very, very heavy environment, um, at least for the first compound we went to. And 
Um, it's just very real poverty that just kind of hit us in the face. Yeah, so after that, though, um, we got to interview these families that the Christian Alliance had appointed for us. Um, and that was a really beautiful thing to see their perspectives on the program because even though we kind of sensed this like heaviness and this poverty, um, a lot of them were so thankful and so happy to be there and to receive these supplements and more so even to build relationships and um, feel very confident and feel like themselves and detached from any stigma. Um, and that was a really, really beautiful thing. For the interview process, we were split up into two teams. So I was with Dennis and um, David was with Deb. And um, the Christian Alliance gave us at least three or four caretakers from each family in the program to interview. And um, it was just an amazing experience. Like usually um, Dennis, at least in my team, would be conducting the interviews through a translator. Um, and then I would be writing down notes like as much as I could. Um, and that's to protect so we have enough information just in case something were to get lost or misplaced. And so that was usually my role. But then um, throughout the whole week of doing that, at the end, I was able to do a couple interviews. And so was David. And that was an amazing experience um, to be able to be doing professional interviews in the middle of a compound in Zambia was just absolutely incredible and so yeah it goes through a translator and then we got to hear uh, perspectives on this program and what it means to the families and the impact it's had on the community and it was absolutely wonderful. It was a little uncomfortable for me <laughs> as a biology major compared to Sam who was a social work major and um, had a little bit of experience with that before but it was really cool, um, and it just kind of, with time, got easier and easier just to kind of sit back and talk with these people and hear some of the things that were going on in their lives. Um, it was really, it was just really powerful. So another cool part about our time in Zambia was getting to actually interact with the staff um, and the caretakers um, involved in the program. Um, there were several who actually um, lived at the place where we stayed, and it was cool to get to know them and um, spend some time with them. And we were actually, the main office of the program um, was at the place where we were staying. So like the director was there and some of the people who helped organize the distributions were there. And it was just really, it was great to be able to get to know them and spend some time together and to see their perspective. Um, especially it was really cool to sp uh, spend every morning um, we had devotions and it was really cool to get to spend that time with them too and just start off the day um, with a really similar focus even though we were doing very different different things. But coming back, um, I had a totally different perspective on the research in a number of ways. Um, there were things that I didn't really realize without going um, that I now realize coming back and doing some of the research that just made so much more sense. There were pieces that I kind of could put together having actually been there and seen the distribution and like seeing how the kids were weighed and how they were measured. Um, for example, the, some of the kids um, who were infants were being weighed in their diapers and the weights that we were getting back from them just on an Excel spreadsheet that doesn't have that information. So the weights were a little bit off and it made so much more sense knowing that um, because they were supposed to be weighed without any diapers on, um, things were off. And of course, one of the, the more important things that like, I learned and took away um, from a research standpoint by going there was just um, a newfound like, passion for what we were doing back here because it had so much more meaning having actually gone there and seen the children and um, seeing um, the malnourishment and just seeing like, what the program was doing coming back and like doing, you know, sometimes boring things like crunching numbers, knowing that it actually was going towards something productive and meaningful for these kids was, um, it was a lot easier to get excited about some of the more mundane things. And what I was doing was taking these recorded interviews that we'd done in Zambia and redictating them. Um, into another recorder so that they were all in English instead of the translation time and um, the tribal languages. So I was listening in one ear 
to our interviews we did and then dictating them back into another recorder. And we'd go through each interview and pick out large themes and quotes and just anything that really stood out to us that we thought was really necessary that the program would you know, hear back from us. The big overarching theme we found um, was vulnerability versus empowerment, like a spectrum. And um, we just noticed how the, the Milk and Medicine program is really trying to move families from vulnerability to empowerment. I think one of the things that initially drew me to this project was having the opportunity to do research in a way that kind of allowed you to take a step back and for me take a step out of like the hard like laboratory research um, and kind of get a sense for the big picture um, and experience some like big real problems that were very tangible. So I think for me this this trip and this research research has been a great opportunity to do that and um, to kind of understand that there um, is a reason to do stuff like this. Um, and so it'll definitely be something that directs kind of where I go and where I'm headed and I really hope that it's something um, and I'm I think it will be something that I really invest time and energy into in the future. This project has impacted me in a lot of ways um, but first it's definitely strengthened my um, connection to the country of Zambia and yes I have the personal personal connection with my sister and niece but also this research has helped me um, look at Zambia from a very different angle and really just yeah be a student of the culture and learn so much more about it and um, see these people differently and just learn to love them a lot more they were just able to show me how how cool um, global research is and how meaningful and important it is um, and how much it can really influence the world actually and um, that's something i didn't know before and um, i just have a whole whole new um, vision of the world. It was definitely a confirming trip for me uh, because I'm pursuing social work and um, I felt so confirmed to work with um, children who have been adopted cross-culturally um, and I'm just gaining new insight on culture and especially Zambian culture but um, just looking at the world very differently now and I felt very very confirmed in um, my passions and what I want to do with social work. Yeah, I'm a get it up.